What comes to mind when you hear about actors giving great physical performances? I- I'm not talking about physical transformations like Christian Bale losing 28 kilograms for his role in Brad Anderson's The Machinist, or Christian Bale gaining 18 kilograms for his role in Adam McKay's Vice. I'm talking about performances in which the actor's movement and kineticism is singled out as particularly noteworthy. I guess in recent times what comes to mind is Joaquin Phoenix's performance in Todd Phillips's Joker, which actually also involved weight loss, so maybe that's not a great example. But even the New York Times dance critic Gia Corlos weighed in on his performance, saying... It's not just the way he moves with uncultivated finesse, dreamily, animalistic like a rock star, or how when he stretches his arms out side to side he evokes the ghosts of Jim Morrison or Brandon Lee in The Crow. It has more to do with the nuanced way his body can express emotion. You see the mind at work, and because of that, the dancing enters another realm. But often it's the physical performances at the other end of the spectrum that are most overlooked, those given by actors who manage to convey so much by seemingly doing so little. My name is Ash, and this is The Film Exciter. I was reminded of this the other day when I watched two films over two consecutive nights, Kitty Green's The Assistant and Eliza Hittman's Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. I I didn't mean to watch these as a double bill, but I was struck by the way the film's leads, Julia Garner and Sidney Flanagan, both gave incredible minimalistic performances. In fact, both films share similar thematic material. Spoilers incoming, by the way. In The Assistant, Jane, played by Garner, finds herself in a job where the threat and suggested execution of predatory male workplace behaviour looms large, and in Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always, Flanagan's 17-year-old Autumn navigates the daily ritual humiliation and abuse by colleagues, strangers, and, it is suggested, adults who have a duty of care. But it's the quiet manner in which both actors imbue their characters with weary resignation or the feeling of enraged helplessness in the face of this oppression that's most striking. Take this scene, the scene writer-director Hitman called the film's pivotal scene, in which Autumn is sensitively questioned by a planned parent and counsellor about her sexual partners. One thing that aids the actor is the beautifully economic way in which the scene is constructed. I, I, I don't think we can ever really care about any character unless we feel we know them, and films always have to strike this balance between not really allowing us to see too much and giving their characters huge information dumps that awaken us to the narrative construct and pulls us out of the world of the film. This film gets the release of information about Autumn's backstory just right. Just watch. Why are you asking me this? I want to make sure that you're safe. Your partner's threatened or frightened you. Never. Rarely. Sometimes. Always. Um, rarely? Okay. Your partner has hit you, slapped you, or physically hurt you. Never. Rarely. Sometimes. So what Flanagan is doing here, with the absence of much dialogue at all to convey what her character is thinking, is doing it all masterfully with her face. Hitman has chosen a tight close-up, uncomfortably so, which puts us right there with Autumn, but also gives the actor no room to hide. For a lesser actor, this can be very exposing, but Flanagan finds the thread of this scene beautifully, taking us from this stiff physicality in which she's unable very often to meet her counsellor's gaze through discomfort, embarrassment, shame, fear, and then the little tremble of the lips as she tries to suppress the overwhelming tide of emotion that eventually overcomes her. It's a brilliantly restrained, pitch-perfect performance that does so much with so little. There's a similar scene in The Assistant in which Julia Garner's character, Jane, goes to HR with the intention of informing them about her suspicions about her boss's behaviour. In particular, a young, recently hired intern who's been put up at a fancy hotel that her boss has recently visited. This epic ten-minute scene also has a clearly delineated through-line. Jane starts her meeting meek but determined, the experience of her years putting the innate feeling of wrongdoing and 
the resolution to do something about it before any kind of cogent plan of how to approach an older male line manager and one whom, as she discovers, has had way more experience in rebuffing and refuting accusations put to him. He knows immediately how to undermine Jane and, like all effective predators, goes for her weakness by repeating her words back to her with derision and incredulity and seeing how far she'll bend until she breaks. For the viewer, what sells this scene and what's so devastatingly effective is watching what little courage Jane initially had be so ruthlessly and effectively extinguished. There are these little half-smiles and brave attempts to counter any attack aimed at her, but we can see from Garner's performance the creeping, dawning realisation that this game is rigged. Soon, the HR manager's seemingly benign questioning leads to suggestions of envy and jealousy on Jane's part, before out-and-out -out threats about her future and her position with the firm should she decide to pursue the allegation. I remember Lieutenant Colonel Frank Slade's speech at the end of Martin Brest's Scent of a Woman, in which he says, There is nothing like the sight of an amputated spirit. And this is what Julia Garner so brilliantly illustrates here. Sure, her character has more dialogue than Flanagan's, but it's all in the reaction shots in which we see her will and resolve slowly dissolve into shame and helplessness. Look, I'm a big fan of grandstanding and performances that explode like touch paper in a technical fusion of electric wordsmithery and commanding animated performances, but I also have a huge affection for these smaller demonstrations of humanity, scenes that rely on these intricate, micro-nuanced details that only a handful of actors can successfully achieve. The kind of performances where less is gloriously and devastatingly more.